My name is Andras Bukfeyash and I'm a senior field application engineer at NI. In this short video, I'm going to show you the radar vapor generation library version 2.2 and its new features. I will get started with a quick overview on the generation 2 architecture. Then I introduce the MATLAB API, show how it's built on top of the lab view code, and then we check the examples in MATLAB itself. So let's have a look at the architecture. Everything is based on the VST hardware that can be the DXI Express 5840, 41, 30, or 31 devices. Each of these devices have an analyzer and a generator front end. Both of these front ends are connected to an FPGA for further digital signal processing and serving as a further layer for the drivers. The RFSA driver provides a simple interface to get and acquire IQ signals with triggering. On the generation side, the RFSG driver is able to send IQ signals from a basic script and also supports additional features for synchronization. On the top of the RFSG driver, we build the Radar Tools library that is included in this template. The Radar Tools library is a set of an additional APIs on top of the RFSG that provides aerospace and defense related radar waveform transmissions and gives a much more simplified interface. For example, with this library, the user does not have to specify the IQ waveforms by itself, sample by sample, rather than it is possible to select from predefined waveforms, set up BRI, pulse repetitions, and more complex now, this is the set which is provided by the library. However, normally, in the previous example, you could see a soft front panel on top of it that shows radar feature. This example for the MATLAB API, the Radar Tools library, is used as an API only, and there is an additional wrapper layer on top of it to provide simple interface for MATLAB and any other C or Python languages. However, the instrument class, so the other language wrapper, is created only in MATLAB. In order to enable MATLAB to receive IQ signals from the dri driver synchronized, we have an additional wrapper for the RFSA file. Please note that this architecture expects advanced radar signal analysis to be performed in MATLAB level, so there is no additional radar layer in the lab view, just the wrapper. So, let's get to the example. Let's have a quick look now on how this architecture looks in reality. This is the radar that has the Radar Tools library inside, the wrappers on top of the Radar Tools library, and the soft front panels for Radar Tools generation and basic Radar Tools analysis. Please note that if you need further information on the architecture of the Radar Tools library or on how to use the radar pools generation example, please watch the other video. This video shows only how the wrappers, the new features, are working. In the wrappers library, you will find three main folders the DLLs, the LabVIEW files, and the MATLAB scripts. The LabVIEW files are a basic LabVIEW example on how to use the wrappers that were previously created inside the radar tools library for generation. For analysis, the RFSA wrapper is here in the sub VIs folder. These are the functions that will be exposed to MATLAB. To see how to use these functions in a basic send and receive example still in LabVIEW without the wrappers, please open up this example. So let's see how this example actually works. This example here is the wrapper itself. If you think back on the other video for this example, the radar tools generation soft front panel and the analysis panel, you have all the parameters that you can set either at start time when you start the application by selecting the devices. And after that, using the script mode, you can define multiple chirps for the same channel, and then you can define multiple channels with the other dimension of a, of a 2D string array. For details again, please check out the other video. In this example, which is designed for the wrapper, there was a need for certain simplification. 
as it is not possible to simply pass two-dimensional string arrays between MATLAB and LabVIEW, we have flattened those scripts into a single script. Let's see how this flattening actually works. There is one dimension, which is the channel dimension of the radar data feed. The separation mark for the dimensions are the hashtags. Hashtag can be found here, and hashtag can be found here. So everything that is described here is for uh, channel 1, and the rest is for channel 2. Everything in the script here works the same as it is described in the other video and in the documentation. Here, you can also set one device for receive. In this example, it's going to be channel 0. And we have to set, of course, a source uh, for plotting. We can peek into the selected uh, DX poses just to see the IQ value, because this is also the part the API. And the lower part is the signal analyze, analysis funnel. You can set the analyzer frequency, IQ rate, and here is the waveform to be seen. When I start this example, you may see that the poses that are defined in the script are actually visible in a loop back. Now, both of the VSDs, A and B, are looped back from transmit to receive. A is looped back to itself, B is looped back to itself too. Let's see how these examples are connected to networks. What happens is that we have a build specification here in LabVIEW, Radar Pools TRX, and this creates a DLL library based on the functions that I have shown. So with the source file settings, we can have a quick look on what are the functions or VIs that are actually exposed. DLLs will be created into this folder. In MATLAB, the same wrappers library is open. There is a class library which has an NIVSD for radar wrapper. So, for example, if you want to initialize a radar pool generator, then you don't have to make this crazy long DLL call at every line of your MATLAB script. All you have to do is call this function and every variable and error that might occur uh, during the runtime will be handled by this instrument wrapper class. First of all, I suggest opening up the wrapper itself and reading the basic documentation. This code has three separate examples. The first one is the radar tools generation class. In this example, from MATLAB, there is a possibility to create any kind of radar data cube using the radar data cube description string as described in the other video and in the lab view examples. All you have to do is use the APIs as stated in this example, define the script, define the LO frequencies, create an instance of the NIVSD for radar, initialize the pool generation with the resource names and the clock source, write the pool's description script, this one. From the generation side, you can get the LO frequency uh, to see what is the physical frequency and what is the additional offset done in the FPGA part. This will be used later when synchronization is going to be needed. Also, uh, there is a way to peek into the actual raw IQ data before transmission. Here, in the simple for loop, we just play the RDC once with the repeat count as set above. Let's see how this example runs in action. This uh, RFMX soft front runner is set up to monitor the receive port of one of the VSDs. When I hit the play here for the example, you can see that the analyzer gets triggered, and here are the poses that were defined in the radar description screen. Here in MATLAB, you will see one of the poses at its IQ waveform. Let's see now the other examples with transmit and receive. To do that, make sure you shut down the soft front tunnel because the analyzer part of the VSD is going to be needed for MATLAB. If we open up the TRX radar pool generation, it does exactly the same thing as described in the LabVIEW based wrapper example. It sends multiple poses and analyzes them. Now let's see what are the functions that we need to call for that. The signal generation has to be set up exactly the same way. The analyzer, we have to initialize an additional analyzer with the resource name and a clock source, set the start frequency, set the reference level, set sampling rate, set the LO frequency based on what we got from the generator side, set the number of samples that we want to read, we arm the analyzer, like in LabVIEW, we play the radar data cube, and we fetch the IQ samples. We do basic calculation to get the focus versus time curve. Let's see how this is happening in action. 
as you see, the graph updates at every iteration that you see. This is over, this is down. Finally, let's see an elephant-based trigger timing test. As I've said before, in the transmit and receive example, the generation is done using the wrapper for the radar tools lightning, and the VST is going to issue a trigger to the back brain and then back to itself or to another VST as defined in the visual string. This triggering mechanism and the ELO sharing enables to do pulse compression and measure the actual loopback time. The loopback time is measured using an LFM slogan. The analyzer and the generator is set as before. However, when we get the IQ samples for the selected pulses, I create a mesh filter based on the pulses. And after reception, not just over versus time is calculated, but we calculate the convolution using the meshed filter and the LFM waveform that has been received. Let's see how it works in action. The upper graph shows over versus time inside the single pulse. And this second graph shows the convolution result versus delay time. The peak of this graph, this point, is actually the delay. Now there has been 10 iterations and every iteration, the program measures the delay. And it is visible here that the standard deviation between the iterations are less than one sample position. This is how precise triggering can be here. And also this shows that this architecture enables LFM pulse compression on radar signals that allows developers to add additional waveforms in WebView and do additional experiment, experiment, experiments using an iPad. Thank you for listening.